So today's the start of PaizoCon 2023 online. It started with a keynote and I wasn't even sure I was going to do a video about the keynote because I wasn't sure how much information would be out there. In the end, I took over three pages of notes and it is basically a lot of short chunks of what we're going to get in further panels that they're going to be doing. So we'll go ahead and cover it and then you can maybe help you choose which panels you want to go to depending on what sounds interesting to you. But my name is Don. I'm trying to be the Sly Strategist and let's go ahead and get into it. So this keynote was pre-recorded and I will say that didn't really do anything good or bad for the uh, particular keynote itself. Aside from the fact that there were no questions answered in there, but I kind of didn't really expect any to be. But we started out with Eric Mona and talked about how there would be a big reveal at the end, as well as talk about how a little bit how changes went from the OGL to the ORC license, as well as we got to see the final cover art for uh, Wayne Reynolds for the Player Core and the GM Core books. Then he introduced Logan Bonner for the Pathfinder Remaster Project. There is a whole two-hour presentation on that. And if I took three pages of notes for this, I took five pages of notes on that. So that is unfortunately going to wind up being a totally separate video. But Logan did talk a little bit about how the remaster is going to be the four books that we all know, Player and GM Core, Monster Core, which replaces Bestiary 1, and Player Core 2, which replaces the Advanced Player's Guide. There were updates to the presentation of the information in those books, as well as the rules, and it is really a true remaster as opposed to a rewrite. A lot of it has to do with the legal issues with the OGL, so these books are going to go fully on the ORC license. Basics of the rules are still going to be there and the old content will still work and there are some minor adjustments. One of the ones that we all heard about before is alignment. Another one that they brought up and is kind of interesting is on focus spells. But the main focus is making it easier for new players to engage with the game and pick it up without having, although in truth, I love the fact that the player handbook includes a GM information in it and it is over 600 pages, but it's be a much tighter book for new players to come on without be feeling overwhelmed. So these books are more focused and smaller, fewer barriers to entry and fewer fiddly things in the core books. Future releases of books will use the naming conventions for monsters and spells, as well as the alignment and things like that, but they will use the rules in the remastered books but they did state once again that the old books will still work. Talked a little bit more about like player core and GM core bringing out versatile heritages. Um, backgrounds are expanded and most of this information was already covered in the other Twitch, but there's well more information that comes out in the remastered talk that I will cover next. Then James Case brought out and talked about some other things that are coming online. One that was already released was Treasure Vaults, so we didn't go too far into that, but Rage of Elements, which is Elements and Elemental Magic. So as opposed to the original four, they're also bringing on Wood and Metal are going to be added, and it's a different breakdown per element. Talks about how there are basically two Elemental Lords, as well as the fact that Kineticist is coming in this particular book, The Rage of Elements, and how they kind of work is they have an inner gate inside of them that allows them to bring forth these particular elemental things. They did show an image of one of the kineticists called Yoon. This is going to be the first book that is going to be totally compatible with the Orc license. And it will also launch with a document that will tell you what the differences are between the core rulebook rules as well as the player core and GM core rules. So it'll be a little bit easier to, to transition, although the transition will not be hard to begin with. Then they talk about Howl of the Wild. It's a next big creature book. You're led through it by an older naturist and his eccentric crew on the airship that we saw in the other, other preview from the blog post. As you go through and looking at, for the four wardens of the wild, six new playable ancestries, all of these ancestries are tied to kind of like a wild side. We already know about the Minotaur and Centaur. Unfortunately, no more released in this particular keynote. Maybe there'll be some coming up in some of the other panels that are going to be going on. 
More animals, more beasts, as well as regional variants and some totally new ones, spells, archetypes, and new feats that are available. Then Luis Loza came on talking about Lost Omens, brought up a book that was already released, Firebrands, you know, the book about the rebels and braggards, their history, their establishment, how if you wanted to be a firebrand, how you would join, and what faction you would join if you wanted to. Because some factions are more about rebellions and some are more about happiness. Some important NPCs in the Firebrand organization, as well as adventure and campaign hooks and settings information. There's new mechanics, new equipment, new magic items, new spells, new feats, and new feats for existing archetypes that you can bring in to the other books and to your player in order to bring them into a Firebrand flavor. This is your rebellion book if you wanted one. It also includes something kind of interesting, which is a services price list. So if you wanted to find a safe house, this is how much it would cost. If you wanted to smuggle something, well, then you'd have to pay this amount. So it kind of comes up with a good list so you know what you're getting into if you wanted to be a criminal enterprise in Galarian. Then a new release coming out, which is Lost Omens High Helm. It's coming out in June. It's all about the city of High Helm and Dorvan culture. So this will be the big one if you do play a dwarf, want to play a dwarf, or want to get into Dorvan culture, because there are some things in here that other ancestries can use. High Helm is the largest hub of Dorvan culture in the inner sea. All 10 hubs are listed, but High Helm is the most important. It is the nexus for trade and diplomacy in the Shining Sea area. Fantastical city that is built into Emperor's Peak in the side of a mountain. It is basically a three-layered city where you have King's Crown at the top with all the nobles and highborn King's Heart, more the middle class, and Stone Breach, which is towards the base where you get the art trade and innovation kind of happens there. And outside of High Helm itself is the Depths, which is the tunnels and caves for infrastructure and how the city actually runs and how that connects into the Darklands. It will come with a map of each one of these layers as well as a big pull-out poster so you can use it for your campaigns as well as the Sky King's Tomb. Keep Sky King's tomb in mind. There's a gazetteer for each one of these sections of the setting so you know the flavor and the feeling and what you might find there. New rural options for each section of the city. The example they gave was if you needed a specific NPC in King's Crown to create a weapon for you. Would be a good example of rural options in a specific section of the city. As well as a little bit of conversation about the broader Five Kings Mountain region where High Helm is located. However, High Helm is the political center of the region. Talks about how they discovered adamantine and use it to protect themselves from Tarbathon by creating a new alloy called Keepstone, which is the adamantine mixed with other metals that defends very well against magic attacks. So these items can be available. Also talked about Torag's shield, which is a giant shutter on High Helm to protect itself from any attacks it get from Torbathon. Then we get into the Dorvern culture side of it, the 12 major clans, that they all focus on different things, how you would join a clan if you want to join a clan and leave yours, what would happen if you get exiled from a clan, as well as the smaller clans that are outside of the main 12. And then we get into the clan daggers, how you would gain a clan dagger, how to get it, how to empower the dagger, what if you don't have a clan dagger, what happens if you lose your clan dagger. These are all things that are part of that particular culture, as well as government and criminal activities that occur within High Helm. How time is measured when you're underground all the time, what plants and animals you're going to find in the city, as well as the Dorvan Pantheon of Gods. There are 10 gods, Torag the main god, and you've heard about Druzgar as well, but there are eight other gods that don't get a lot of time. These will be detailed in this particular book. Also talk a little bit about a river sune, which is a belief in spirits common in Dorvan culture. And it is a very unique Dorvan belief and kind of goes into that a little bit. There are other rules options that are made available in the general options. There's new ancestry feats. And some of these feats are available to other races, as well as kind of an interesting new archetype here called the stalwart defender. It bucks down to make themselves tougher. They can do things like they can recover hit points when they're behind their shield wall that they're making. They can do stomps that will make the area around them difficult terrain for anybody who tries to attack them. But the thing is, is that other races can learn that, but they have to learn it in High Helm. This will be coming out next month in June. 
and also talked a little bit about Tianjia and Lost Omens and a player guide for that. But that'll be introduced more in the Secrets of Galarian panel on Saturday. Then Linda Zayas Palmer and James Jacobs came out on Pathfinder Adventures. Big one being Sky King's Tomb, which is a level 1 to 10 player character adventure that takes place in High Helm, has a lot of Dwarven themes, as well as Sold and Fate, which is a little bit of a time travel before Sky King's Tomb, and how right now the first two books are published, but there's a third one coming out, and how the over-the-top hints in the finale, as well as Season of Ghosts, which is a four-parter that takes place in Xianjia. It is for levels 1 through 12. It'll be coming out between October and January, as well as a new standalone adventure for first level called Rust Henge, which takes place in the western regions of New Thassalon. It is basically how lower level characters would play in a region with rune lords, and that's supposed to come out in October 2024. Then we had Mark Moreland and John Morgantini come out, talk about more third party things. Um, Mark Moreland was talking about Pathfinder and Starfinder, things that aren't produced by Paizo. So we had Pathfinder Nexus Character Creator Open Beta, uh, a Kickstarter for Dynamite Comics for the Pathfinder and Starfinder series that are coming up, BKOM Studios Abomination Vaults. Plus, there is one more game that hasn't been announced yet, but that'll be announced in the next coming weeks. Uh, Steve Jackson Games basically is doing a reskin of the Revolution board game that sets it in Corvosa in the same time frame as The Curse of the Crimson Throne. It will become the version going forward for that particular game starting late 2023. Also talked a little bit about the VTT partners, Foundry, Roll20, Fantasy Grounds, Alchemy, and how they're available in the Paizocom Discord if you wanted to ask questions about any of those particular systems during this time frame of Paizocon. Then John Morgantini came out talking about community efforts. Like if you wanted to get questions answered, how you go to the Paizo forums, the community use policy for YouTubers and how you can get graphics, which if you see graphics, they usually come from the blog for me or from the community use art that is available, as well as a compatibility license for other systems. If you wanted to use the setting of Galarian itself, Pathfinder Infinite and Starfinder Infinite exist as well as community outreach with libraries or group teaching, you can go ahead and email community at paizo.com with your request and what you want to do, what types of players you're going to have, and they will try to select good APs for you, good ways to introduce a system to new people, and they'll do that as a community outreach program rather than paid. Then for Starfinder, we had Thurston Hillman and Jenny Jarzabski came out talking about the new Starfinder Enhanced book which is a 192-page Starfinder rulebook that has more player options for players, enhancing some of the current classes. Four classes get an update, as well as a look at some of the other base classes. There are new class options for every class, however. There are new spells, new species, and new feats. Matter of fact, they pointed out that there are over 90 new feats. Um, some new rules for scaling equipment, some new GM tools for DC scaling, as well as new uses for resolve points. This will be coming on October 2023, 20, and Sunday at 1 Pacific, there is a Starfinder panel for spoilers on Starfinder, Starfinder Enhanced. And then Jenny came back on and talked about a new hardcover adventure path called Mechageddon. Uh, tier 17 mechs, 18th level characters, is about the, the range it's going to be, and you will confront a major threat in a mech at the end of it. Uh, you can find more about this in the Secrets of the Packworld panel. This is coming out in 2024. Then Linda Zayas Palmer came back out with Alex Speedle talking about organized play, talking about the new Pathfinder and Starfinder campaigns and how they are living campaigns, meaning that all the individual Pathfinder Society and Starfinder Society groups will go out and do these individual adventures and you will go out and do one here and one another group. You can do it in another part of the world. You can do it in another time zone. You can do it when you have time. But then these get reported back to Paizo and they change how the story is going to run based on what NPCs were met, what baddies were killed, and how things went in particular adventures and how it is a living campaign. It's also being played at PaizoCon right now. 
Uh, Pathfinder Society 413 and 414 are done, as well as Starfinder Society is opening its new campaign. Then they brought kind of teased a little bit with the name of Pathfinder Society's Year 5 campaign, which is the Year of Unfettered Exploration. And Eric Mona came back on talking about the big final reveal. The big final reveal is that Pathfinder Adventure Path number 200 is coming out. And the original writer of Pathfinder of the adventure of the first adventure path was James Jacobs and it took place in Sandpoint it was written in 2007. Well, the 200th one is going back to Sandpoint and is being written by James Jacobs. It is called Seven Dooms for Sandpoint. This will be coming out in March 2024. Special double-sized, actually th their words, double-sized mega adventure. And uh, it's basically going to roll around what are the dooms. Apparently this was the original office campaign before Pathfinder came out. Now I hope this little summary of the keynote condensed that hour and 40 minutes into less than 20, gave you a little bit of peek into what might be coming up what particular panels you might want to listen to if anything piqued your interest. I will be going more into the remaster in another video. It should be coming out the same day as this one is coming out. And if you did like the video, I hope you like, subscribe, or hit that notification bell. But whatever you do, I hope you have a great day and happy adventuring. Thanks.